Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness within our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the living word of God. Thank you, God. Our gospel reading for today comes from John, the third chapter, beginning in the first verse. 
Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God's living word for us. God, guide us by your word. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall never die, but have eternal life. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the that the world might be saved through Him. Yes, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him shall never Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be honoring to you. Amen. 
What questions do you have late at night or early in the morning when you want to go to bed, but there's just so many things that keep you awake? What bothers you drills deeply into your psyche and makes you feel scared, uncomfortable, nervous, or anxious? Lots of things can do this for us. For some of us, it may be family disagreements, struggles at work, concerns about sickness or a diagnosis still unknown, and the list goes on. But the things that keep us up at night are myriad, and the common denominator is likely fear, fear of the unknown and also fear of the known. And over the last year, there's been plenty of both. We stay up wondering when our kids will go back to school without masks. For some, this is exciting, and for others, there's trepidation. We wonder if we'll ever have a family reunion again before we die. Will our niece get married, or will she have to elope because she's not allowed to invite anybody else to her wedding? Late at night, we lie and wonder, and we're not so different than Nicodemus. You see, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a man raised on biblical interpretation and an understanding Jewish law from a young age a man who would memorize much of the Old Testament and whose job it was to interpret scripture and Jewish rules for his countrymen and women. Nicodemus was a gifted scholar and a God-fearing man, and late at night, something was bothering him, just like things bother us. But unlike us, who can pray to Jesus about what is bothering us, Nicodemus had an even better option. He could go talk with Jesus face to face. And Nicodemus was scared. So instead of going out in the day when he was just as upset, he waits until he's, uh, the night has begun and much worry is now under his belt before he heads to the place where Jesus is sleeping, or at least resting. And he doesn't seem to surprise Jesus. It's probably hard to sneak up on God's son. You see, Nicodemus is troubled. For his whole life, he'd heard about the coming of a Messiah, a person to save Israel, and maybe even the whole world. But this had become a mythical and somewhat forlorn idea. Under Roman occupation, the Israelites had felt despondent and alone, like they didn't have a friend and certainly could not control even their own destiny. And this messianic idea had slipped far from the consciousness of many. But Nicodemus had had this glimmer of something in his mind and deep within his heart, this idea that God was not done with the Israelite people that the God of the Old Testament might very well be at work in their midst and would send someone to love his people. So on this day, Nicodemus had seen something. He'd seen Jesus do something. He'd been a wedding guest at a big event. And when the wine had run out, two wedding guests had stepped out of the courtyard and begun talking to the chief steward. A middle-aged woman, whose name was Mary, kept talking to her son and telling him what to do. Finally, he called over the chief steward of the wedding banquet and had him bring lots of casks of water over. Then he blessed the water, and it became wine, not just any wine, very good wine. This miracle, done by a man about 30 years old, made Nicodemus wonder if God was up to something. You see, Nicodemus had led a life mostly of study and worry. He studied scripture and then wondered if God was really doing much of anything in the world. For Nicodemus had become so rote, so theoretical. But now there was this man and his mom, and this man Jesus had done something one had, no one had ever done, turned water into wine. And instead of dismissing this act as magic or a trick, Nicodemus saw rightly that this was a sign from God. And this intrigued him, and he wanted to know more. But we, like Nicodemus, know that hopes and dreams are often way too easily dashed. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night with trepidation and fear, hoping for a new day, but also not wanting his colleagues at the synagogue to see him for fear that he'd be ridiculed for going to see a guy whose only big claim to fame was making more alcohol for people to drink during a three-day party. Not high-minded stuff, they'd say. But Nicodemus sees in this sign that Jesus has done something much greater. He actually sees hope for people like him. Hope for a nation suffering under the yoke of too many taxes and very few rights. For people worried about the future. You see, Nicodemus is worried about a lot of the same things that we are. 
He's asking questions like, where did we come from? Where are we going? Will we be okay? And so on. And into these questions, into this anxiety of now and of 2,000 years ago, Jesus, sleepy Jesus, not yet thronged by crowds and not even having any disciples, tells Nicodemus some things that we too need to hear. He says, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. Nicodemus takes him literally, having just seen a miracle earlier that day, maybe he figures that Jesus can do that too. The incredible shrinking Nicodemus reverting into a little newborn baby. No, Jesus says, you need to be born not just of flesh, as you already have been, but of water and the Spirit. Nicodemus struggles to understand, as any good disciple does. So Jesus states things as plainly as he can and gives him these words that live on as some of the most well-known of all Scripture. And I want you to hear these words today and know that they are for you too. That we, who like Nicodemus, worry late at night, are given these words of clarity and love by God and Jesus, who wants us to know plainly who we are and whose we are. Please listen to these words again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. And it goes further. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So here we are late at night or early in the morning, worried, concerned, anxious. And into those feelings, the Spirit of God through Jesus blows a wind of hope. And with that hope comes the promise, not just of a new day and the sunrise of a new morning, but even more so the fact that each of us are so deeply loved by God the Father that he sent his Son to save us. Not just anyone would work. For us and for our neighbors, God sent his only son that each of us would be born again through his forgiveness and given new life with him. And these words certainly emboldened Nicodemus, who having heard these things becomes a disciple of Jesus, maybe not following him around every day, but certainly emboldened and a whole lot less afraid. Since later on, about three years later, he comes out in broad daylight, not just to worship Jesus, but to collect Jesus' body with Joseph of Arimathea, and in broad daylight takes that body to the tomb for embalming. From fear to hope, realizing that he is loved, realizing that we are loved. That's what God wants for each one of us. And I pray that you feel God's love today and always. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul it is well, it is well with my soul well, it is well with my soul. He lives all oh, 
the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part but the whole, is nailed to his cross and I bear it no more, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. sound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well Now we state our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your Spirit. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. We pray for the nations and our leaders, that led by your Spirit, they work towards a world where all the children enjoy peace. We pray especially for Ethiopia, Nigeria, Ukraine, and Sudan. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. We pray for this worshiping community, Grace Lutheran Church, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. We remember also those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war on this Memorial Day weekend. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We take this time within this service to thank you for the ways that you help support all of the ministries here at Grace, whether it's through the time that you spend working on projects that help members here within this church or within the community at large, or if it's through your financial contributions. 
that help support and fund the ministries so that we can continue to serve those all around us. If you'd like to help continue support the many ministries, there are options below on the screen, ways in which you can reach out and help support the ministries here at Grace Lutheran Church as we continue to try to be God's hands and feet in the world. Thank you for your support. Let us continue with our offering prayer. Jesus, you fill the earth with abundance and you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it for his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it for his disciples to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread and wine that you see before you now at home are the same that we blessed here on the Lord's table here at Grace Lutheran Church. And we are a community gathered even when we can't be in person together. We invite you in a moment to pause the video and to partake of this communion. If you're with others, you may serve each other saying the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please pause your video now. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Let's 
Be at peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.